Next on Martha, experience an astounding collection of blimps and spacecraft. The true collector, Peter Arnell. I'll be right back with collector and hobbyist Peter Arnell, who's back and he's going to show us unusual and fascinating collections. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, I'm here with my friend and fellow collector, although I collect nothing compared to Peter Arnell. Uh, I'm with Peter Arnell. He was here a few months ago, and we had such a good time. We couldn't wait for him to come back. So today, it looks like we have dirigibles, otherwise known as blimps, otherwise known as zeppelins, and otherwise known as spaceships. Yeah, air, air spaceships. And... Uh where did uh, you find all these, Peter? Well, they're from all over the world, and uh, uh, a lot of them are toys. Some of them are salesmen's models. Um, some like of them I would go into a store and say I would like to buy a Zeppelin? Well, not exactly. That Goodyear I found in Michigan, <laughs> actually, from a collector. Oh. But that actually is an original Goodyear made out of paper wow. mache. And it was actually put together, and it was in the company's boardroom. Uh, with this is the original stand of the docking mm. station. Boy. Um, but a lot of these were used uh, during uh, the World War I and World War II. Uh, they were used as a, um, a reconnaissance. Uh, you know, uh, they were looking they were at surveying quietly, and looking quietly. They would quietly just float around, float around taking pictures. Exactly. And no one really knew what they were. And they kind of blended with the clouds and they kind of worked. And, uh, and then, of course, uh, during. Uh, uh, the 30s, they decided that it would be a good idea for these things to be pleasure crafts. So people thought, oh, what a wonderful thing to get on them for a couple of days and kind of travel across, you know, the ocean and right. come here. Well, of course, at that time, they couldn't, for the likes of them, sell a floor in the Empire State <laughs> Building. They built this big building and they went bankrupt, for those of you who don't know. So they decided to make the Empire State Building the world's biggest, number one, um, you know, uh, docking station, tallest docking station. The, the new, oh, I didn't know that. The problem was is you can't, like, it's uh, very high up. So you, then you ask these people to get up on a catwalk and get out of the <laughs> dirigible and walk over, you know, this whole plank into the, it didn't work. So they <laughs> only successfully docked there once for three minutes. And, and um, it's windy, too. It was really windy, and some of them kind of like disconnected. Some fell down, some blew up, and everything else. They weren't very popular to a lot of people, these things, here in front. But I collect them because they're the beginning of space exploration, and they're an alternative to the Wright brothers, right? They're kind of natural. And were there kind of dirigibles and... before there were airplanes? Um, the first sketch... Of a, uh, of a dirigible uh, or a hot air balloon or a version of it goes back way before the, the Wright brothers get in the low Manhattan and start to take off uh, on their little plane around right. the, you know, the Statue of Liberty. But, but what's interesting, if you look back here uh, on the frame, oh. I actually have here a photograph. Of, I have a huge collection of photography of all these blimps, and back here... This actually is our studio that we're in right now, the same building. And I said, I have to get, because I have all the documentation of all the blimps that came over the island of Manhattan. Oh, my and gosh. So and this there's is the blimp, um, and uh, there is the studio right over right there. Right here. And this 26th Street, that's very So I thought I'd bring it in. And, and what was that taken from? Um, that was probably taken from another blimp. And yeah. what's interesting is, like with all these frames, they're made from the materials, actually the structure. So I build the frames. Each frame is built out of the material of the dirigible structure and so forth. So kind of interesting stuff. So would you say that your collection is a collection of, is this a toy collection? It's kind of a toy collection in the sense that um, I can't actually fly these things, but it's not a toy collection in the sense of its his historic importance uh, about these models representing a certain period in history um, and a significant what, kind did of... You, were you always a collector from childhood? No, actually, I didn't collect anything when I was young. In fact, I don't have anything from when I was young. And I guess so what I started... Year? What year? Um, I probably started when I was around 26 years old, becoming obsessed with, like, collecting things. Right. And, and it's anything. And your know. first collection was what? The first collection was seashells. Really? Yeah, seashells. Where's, I haven't seen that collection. From the, well, that's in a very special place. Oh. And, <laughs> and, um, and they're from uh, all the Caribbean islands, starting with St. Barth, and uh, it's extraordinary. French West Indies, and wow. they're amazing. There's thousands of shells. And then I went to leaves, and then I, I shellacked leaves, and I collected leaves from all the different seasons. Fantastic. And that was easy, and then I got into, like, serious stuff that's more complicated. Now, where would you find a dirigible? 
Uh, a on real eBay? one? eBay, yeah. No, no. Oh, like this. Oh, you can find them on eBay, Martha, but the best is there's a couple collectors in the world, and we all talk to each other constantly, and they are... They move around. And you they trade? Move around. And we trade. And we trade. Is that the same as that? It's slightly different, but it's of the same factory. This one is a later model, about two years later than that one. And they don't come with these uh, stands. You know, I, I make those stands. Right. They, they, they basically come like that. And they were kits. A lot of these things were kits that kids like, put like together. Like little erector sets. Uh, little erector sets, exactly. Phenomenal. Well, when we come back, Peter's going to show us a little bit more about his fascination with flight. And we're going to get into spaceships, real space. We're back with my friend Peter Arnell and this incredible collection of spacecraft. Now, these are models of actual spacecraft that have gone to space? Right. These are engineering models that were presented by the corporations that actually were contracted by NASA and the government to actually build the so spaceship. These are American spaceships. American spaceships. Can I just say something? No. While you're watching this, I, I may be in Kazakhstan watching my friend Charles uh, take off in a Russian spacecraft. With me. With you. Oh, no, you're not going to, well, you're going to go to Kazakhstan, but you're yeah, not going to take off. Yeah, I'm not going to go on this. I'm not no, going to take off. I'm going to take pictures. But my friend Charles has signed up as a, um, as a citizen in space. So um, that's where we are today, if all goes well. Okay. So uh, this is very appropriate, Peter. Very appropriate. Of. Very appropriate. Now, none of these look like the Russian Soyuz. <clears throat> no, these are all Americans, although I do have some Russian um, uh, stuff. Yeah. Like helmets and uh, 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 space suits. I don't have models. So what's but, the earliest spaceship? Um, the little Mercury capsule here in the front uh, with the orbit tracking map here. The, uh, the and that was John Glenn's? That was John Glenn's. Yes. All by himself? All by himself. Just <laughs> tucked away in that little tuna fish can uh, flying around the Earth um, and tracking back and then landing. Fantastic. But um, what's amazing about these is they're one-offs. And they were the first ones presented. Uh, mo a lot of them were presented to Jack Kennedy, right? Um, it, so how it, did you the get them? Well, I'm friendly with all the astronauts. And they all, uh, a lot of them ended up with, or their families ended up with a lot of the models and so forth. And through a lot of different things and whining a lot and asking and begging and now, crawling and all that stuff. If that's the first, stuff, which is the them. most recent? Well, in, um, in terms of, uh, of course, the what? shuttle, one oh, yeah. back here, oh, yeah. right? Look. Um, it was really amazing. That's Gosh, all one of 200 this, scale. Look all at that. of this goes at yeah, the for, same time. Yeah, yeah, all at the same time. And, and then this breaks Stays. apart and goes up and then lands like a plane. Right. And the most amazing mm -hmm. one is this here. Um, the one here is the uh, Apollo, you know, the first uh, lunar they made, excursion They module. made the movie about it. They made the movie about it. And um, it went to the moon with my buddy Buzz... Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, and what's amazing about this model, which is the original model made by the engineer who actually, um, who actually uh, uh, created the LEM, what's amazing is, of course, they had no idea what the surface of the moon would be like. So these had to These had to, these had to swivel. Func swivel and function. They couldn't be wheels. They couldn't be things that stuck in. They didn't know if the surface would be hard. So, so they had to create a pod that could, like, cushion, resist, Right. Adhere, traction, the whole thing. And it landed just like that with enough gas to then take off again, of course, and then uh, get back connected up to the, and then this thing broke apart and went back to Earth in this now little where, capsule. Now, where were the astronauts in here? They were, they were tucked in this little centerpiece here. Oh, right there, protected. Yeah, <laughs> right, prote protected, yeah, right. by things like Teflon, right? Oh. And uh, a whole bunch of things that we now use in the home um, uh, started uh, it with, uh, with NASA, right, uh, on the space program. Most great technologies that we know today came from the NASA space program. Yeah. I'm very responsible for these things. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're yeah, not yeah, gonna, yeah. We're going to put this yeah. on the table right there now. There was, uh, yeah, okay. good, okay. So now, and this one is? Oh, this is the Gemini program. Uh, you know, Martin did this one before it was Martin Lockheed. And uh, actually, this one is uh, 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 Wally Scherer, you know, one of the, the astronaut fluid, he gave me this and mm. he, he signed it for me. The, the, a lot of these are signed by the pilots. Which one did Joe missions. Allen go on on that? I don't have it here. Oh. I don't have it here. Okay. And the XB-70, um, you know, the, the, the forerunner Inc to the SST. Incredible. And, yeah, and they're all um, uh, Smithsonian quality. And when, uh, you know, when that day comes, they'll all go there. I'm going to donate all of these to the to Peter, the with all the yeah. things Peter has, he will have his own wing on the Smithsonian. <laughs> <laughs> 
I will. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much. And uh, when I come back from Kazakhstan, um, from the uh, Russian Space uh, Center there, um, I think I will know, understand a little bit more about how mm -hmm. these things actually mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. It's a very exciting thing. And to see these in, in proportion, um, in perfect proportion, it's wonderful. Thank you very oh, much. You're welcome. I Thank hope you. you'll come back with more of your amazing collection. Anytime. The true collector, Peter Arnell. We'll be right back.